So here we have an interesting component of charging at dealerships. Protectionism. Some dealers only want you to, to charge their type of car at their dealership. Ford dealers only want Ford cars. Nissan dealers only want Nissan cars. This used to be more prevalent. Some dealers actually would only let cars of their manufacturer that they sold charge there. So some Nissan dealers were turning away Leaf drivers who bought their car somewhere else. Because we have an independent dealer system, they can do whatever they want. Nissan can recommend that they allow all types of cars charge there. They don't have to because they're independent. Some of them are really stingy about the small amount of money that it costs to charge. Now, if you allow all makes of models to charge at your place, you get great word of mouth. And uh, one person had a great saying and I totally forgot it, but it's something along the lines of, uh, if we all add a little water, it raises the level for everyone. Hopefully there will be less and less of this, but it still exists. So this is the first time I've seen it in quite a while. Thanks Greenwood Ford for the charge. I appreciate it. Here I am at Swope Nissan in Elizabeth Town, Kentucky. Uh, really friendly people. I went to plug in and uh, I got a red trouble signal. So it was saying I wasn't able to charge because I just rode through a pretty significant rainstorm. So now that I am getting close to Louisville, I ran through incredible rain. It seems to have soaked into some of the connections. And so I've got one offboard charger and the onboard charger working, but I do not have the second offboard charger working. So I gotta work on that. Right now I'm not on my motorcycle, I'm in a Nissan Leaf. Uh, I'm charging at Swope Nissan. Uh, the man himself, Carl Swope, just pulled up, liked my motorcycle, and gave me his car so I could get some food because it's about lunchtime. That's incredible, it's never happened to me before. I'm very impressed. Here's my bike, charging up, not at 100% because this charger is not sensing the battery. Plus, my phone just went on the fritz, so that's been exciting. At least I'm here with friendly people. There's rain up ahead, so I'm trying to stay dry. So I'm charging more here and waiting to go on to Louisville. And then once I get to Louisville, hopefully some of the, most of the rain will have passed, but uh, looks like I'm gonna get wet again. It's gonna be a long day, I think. Finally, time to get going from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Tape, a little waterproofing. Have some more waterproofing here, and hopefully this will keep me dry, and hopefully all my charges will work the next place I stop. At Tri-County Ford, just north of Louisville, I am charging up again at a reduced rate. So, looks like only one of my external chargers is gonna be working today. This isn't gonna stop me. 12 hour day into a 16 hour day, so. I may be getting in or after midnight after starting my ride at 7 a.m. Yes, I figured it out. Here's what happened. I got caught in a huge rainstorm, got really wet. I went to charge up, this charger was not working. Then I air dried all the connections that I could think of, that I could think of. It turns out I missed one. So there's this one other connection right here, this blue guy, and I didn't dry that one out thoroughly. So I just talked to Harlan Flagg at Hollywood Electrics who made these amazing devices. He knows whenever he gets a phone call from me, I'm in trouble. I'm stranded somewhere on the side of the road. So he helped me out. Now I am ready to charge fully and I can go up to Columbus and I won't have to be riding until midnight. Life is good right now. I'm excited. I also just met a great guy here at Tri-County Ford, Heinz. He is the IT guy. He gave me some electrical tape so I could protect the wiring. So it's amazing the people you run into on these, on these journeys, you know? Travel slow. It's worth it to meet the people wherever you go. I almost forgot. I passed 5,000 miles today. Yay! Booyah.
made it to Cincinnati, Ohio, and I am now charging using Clipper Creek chargers. These are really good. I have one of these at home. My charger has gone back on the fritz. It's just not working. At Mr. Sushi in Cincinnati, Ohio, I possibly got the last part that I need in order to keep fast charging a paper clip. It is now 11 p.m. I have been riding on the highway in the dark from Cincinnati halfway to Columbus, charging at the Tanger outlets who also have charging stations in Savannah, Georgia. Right now, I'm pretty much a fan of Tanger outlets. I have 56 more miles to go, probably half an hour to charge. I will be getting there after midnight, and I've figured out how to work around my charging issue. Uh, I've got it going. I think I will have all my charging capacity for the rest of the trip. If I do not, then I may have to change it. I've accomplished two of the three countries. I've accomplished 5,000 miles, and one more country will happen later in July. Because I am now back in the Eastern time zone, it is now 1240. I am unplugging now and I should be at my destination around 2 a.m. 2 a.m. getting in after leaving at 7 a.m. Central time. So you're gonna have to do the math on this one. Uh, the saying I was trying to remember earlier is a rising tide raises all ships. For those of you who think this is easy, I just got in at 2 a.m. and my feet have been wet since 9 a.m. yesterday. I just took these soaking wet socks off. That's done. Whew. And finally, good night.